So in the last video, we talked about the idea of having a population. So this would be our population, which is just the group of people about which we want to make some kind of a conclusion, some kind of a statement. Uh, but that we don't uh, often don't have the resources or the ability for one reason or another to measure every single person who is in that population, every single person in that group of people. Um, for example, a lot of the time we want to make a conclusion about everyone in the world. Uh, and we may not state it in explicit terms, but we might say something like you might you might see a study saying something like, uh, so, you know, the study found that a red wine is good for your health. Well, by saying red wine is good for your health, they mean generally good for the health of a human being. So in that case, the population is the entire uh, population of the planet. Uh, they're trying to say that the results they found in their study apply to that entire group of people. Obviously, they cannot measure that entire group of people, so they have to measure a, a subset of that group, a subset, and we call that subset, we call that subset a sample. And again, the idea is, uh, the, the key question is, is the sample, is the sample what we call, it, can we use the sample to represent the population? Uh, we say, is the sample representative of the population? If we have a representative sample, if the sample is representative of the population, what that means is simply that the sample it is a sample with the same or at least very similar characteristics characteristics uh, as the population and we want the characteristics to be very much the same or similar at least to the population because we want to make conclusions about the sample that are also true about the population if the sample is representative of the population, then the results, the results that we get when we study the sample, the results are what we would call, and this is all review from the last video, generalizable. We can generalize those results to the population. So we study some small group of people with PTSD, we make some conclusions about that small group. Those conclusions, if the sample of people is representative of the entire population of people with PTSD, then the conclusions we make about that sample can be generalized to the population, meaning that they're also true about the population. So uh, let's use our example of uh, wanting to do a political poll to find out uh, how people are going to vote in the upcoming election. And so we, we have the population, the target population we're wanting to be able to know, to state, state something about is uh, maybe all of the registered voters in Arizona. Uh, and let's say that if we were to look at just, that's not a very straight line, if we were to look at just the, uh, just one characteristic of that population, we might have, say, about half of the population might be male, and maybe about half of the population is female. Now, the big question with samples and populations is, again, whether the sample is representative of the population. And that has to do with how I select that sample. So to give a very simple idea, if I were to come in here and grab people like this, and this was my sample, well, you can see that the sample has about, has about 50% women, and it has, it has about 50% males. So the, to go back to our definition over here, uh, the sample is a representative sample because it has the same characteristics as the population. And the other possibility would be that I go in and for whatever reason, the way I select my sample, I get all men in my sample. And so this is my sample. That does not have the same characteristics as the population. So that's the other possibility is that we have a sample 
with very different characteristics. Characteristics from the population. And we call that, rather than calling it a representative sample, we call it a biased sample. There is some bias in how we selected those people. Uh, so that means that there will be bias in the results, meaning that the results are not generalizable. So in, in, with a biased sample, the sample is so different from the population that the results we find for that sample are not necessarily true they cannot for the population. They cannot necessarily be generalized to the population. So in this example, maybe there is something uh, you know that on average women like about a particular candidate and dislike about another candidate. And so because we have failed to poll women in our study, we have no idea uh, how they're going to vote. And so we predicted that a particular candidate is going to win, and they don't win at all. And that's a very simplistic uh, you know, example, but uh, in political polls in the past, there have been some dramatically inaccurate poll results that could be shown to be the result of the sample not being representative of the population because there was some very large bias in the sample. So in the next video, we'll talk about how, what kinds of sampling techniques, what kinds of approaches to, take, to choosing our sample, to selecting our sample, can we use to make sure that it is representative or to help ensure that it is representative, to give it a better chance of being representative, and to try to avoid it being biased.